I've known about and have wanted to play Pandemic for years. It was highly rated and people always talked about it. However, during the actual pandemic, the price skyrocketed and hardly any copies were in stock. While other people were enjoying the thematic accuracy of this game during lockdown, curing diseases, saving the world, blah blah blah, I played Plague Inc. where I created a disease and competed to spread it across the world. This was mainly because of availability, but I like to think I'm a little bit evil too. I recently got a chance to try out Pandemic and I had a great time. Pandemic is a cooperative game, which I tend to like. This just means that you act together with other players and either all win or you all lose. Each player is given a role, which gives them a unique ability to help cure and eradicate diseases. Some combinations of roles may be easier to work with. However, after playing several times, I feel like you can win with any combination of roles. One thing I liked is while special powers in a lot of games only minimally change the game, the special powers in this game are actually very useful. There are four diseases in the game, blue, yellow, black, and red, and you win if you are able to cure all four of them. Each disease is centered around a particular geographical area, but they can technically spread beyond that area if there are enough outbreaks. An outbreak basically is when an area is so overcome with a disease that it spreads to all adjacent areas. If eight outbreaks occur in the game, you automatically lose. In a turn, a player can take up to four actions. You can choose to move to another location. You can always move to an adjacent location while you also have the ability to discard a card to move to a more distant location, or you can move between research stations. Oh yeah, so research stations are really important because they're the only location where you can cure diseases. At the beginning of the game, you get a research station in Atlanta. However, as an action, you can choose to build a research station by discarding a card matching the city you are in. You can also choose to treat a disease. To do this, you remove one cube from the city you are in if the disease has already been cured you can treat all of them very easily. You can also use an action to discover a cure. To do this, you go to a research station and discard five cards that match the disease you are curing. To help with this, you have the ability to use the share knowledge action where you can give or take a card from another player. In this way, generally one player might try to build up the blues and another the reds, another the yellow, so on and so forth. Once the disease has been cured, it still needs to be eradicated, which can be done by treating all remaining cases on the board. If that occurs, the disease is basically gone forever. After taking all four actions, a player takes two cards from the player deck. Most of these cards are city cards, which you can use later to travel around or cure diseases. Occasionally, you will get an event card, which gives you a special ability to help you out. However, in this deck, there are epidemic cards, which I'll talk more about in a moment. If you do not draw an epidemic card, you go straight to the infection deck, where you draw as many cards as the current infection rate. Each city you draw gets an additional disease cube. If you are about to place a fourth cube in a city, instead you infect all adjacent cities, as each city can only carry three cubes. This is an outbreak and is tracked on the outbreak meter. Let's take a second and go back to those epidemic cards that you can draw in the player deck. If you draw an epidemic card, you increase the infection rate, which means you may be infecting more areas every turn. You then draw the bottom card and place three disease cubes in the city. This may or may not cause an outbreak. You then reshuffle all of the infection cards you have already drawn and place them back on top. This makes outbreaks much more likely as you are constantly going through the same cities and infecting the same cities. You ultimately win if you cure all diseases despite all difficulties before the player deck runs out. You automatically lose if you get to the bottom of the outbreak track, you run out of any disease cube color because you can't place as many as you're supposed to, or you run out of cards in the player deck. I really enjoyed this game. I'm just surprised it took me so long to pick it up. I really love cooperative games in general, and the reason I just love cooperative games is I feel like games that are designed to be cooperative, you working with other players, are designed to have a more difficult mechanic as the game itself. Because it's basically like you're fighting the game, so the game usually has its own engine builder almost, or something that goes on that's really hard to beat. Now with this one, I will say that I think it's easier to beat than most cooperative games, which makes it a very great family weight or intro to cooperative. In my first week of playing it, I believe I played it like six times, because it's pretty quick to get through once you know the rules. And I think I probably won about half of those times, 
which compared to a lot of other cooperatives I play is actually a fairly easy game in a way in that you win half the time. But with that, I actually really like that with this because it's really easy to bring to the table with people who aren't used to those really nitty gritty hard cooperative games and can be enjoyable because you actually often have the chance of winning. I kind of have a funny story about this actually. So at the beginning when I was playing this game, I did not know that it was considered a win if you cured all four diseases. I thought you had to cure all four diseases and eradicate every single disease on the board to where there was not one cube remaining. And I thought this game was, like, impossible, and I was so confused, because I thought it was supposed to be more like that family way, that's just kind of, like, fine, you're, you're likely to win. And I was getting devastated, and then I went back and realized that I had been winning a lot, so it was kind of funny. So, uh, hopefully no one else falls into that when they start playing the game. I also really enjoyed how different this game felt when you were playing with different roles. Every time I played, I think this might be in the rules, but I'm sure you can just do whatever you want, uh, I assigned out the roles randomly so we didn't know what we'd be getting and we didn't know who we would be playing and I got to try out maybe four different ones because I got to repeat once or twice and every single time I had a different player power or role the game actually felt drastically different because it changed everything that I did and as I mentioned earlier lots of times like player special powers or roles don't have a big impact on the game and I really loved in this one how your profession that helped with the pandemic really changed the movements you would make on your turn specifically. I just really like that. More on the doom and gloom side, I actually loved how drastically this would pick up. You would have one turn where you feel like you have everything under control. By the next time, the next round through player turns, you might feel like you are going to lose no matter what. And a lot of this has to do with the epidemic cards causing outbreaks and reshuffling everything and putting the same cards you already drew up on top to where you're constantly in the state of worry, panic, and you don't know if you're going to be able to figure it out. And I just love that mechanic of how quickly it can go from having everything under control to blowing up. Um, yeah, I like that. <laughs> so having played this now, I really do think this is one of the best introductory or family weight cooperative games on the market. And this is really exciting to me because I know there's a lot of different pandemic games out there. So if you are a huge fan of pandemic and all of the other games that come in this, what do you call it, franchise? I don't know. Uh, let me know which pandemic game I should try next because I know that there's a rabbit hole I can go down with this and I'd want to start with the one that you think is best for someone who's only tried the base game, <laughs> like me. Thanks for watching and bye.